good, yeah. All right, with it being six o'clock, I'd like to call this meeting to order. We'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance by students from Grand Star Elementary. That'll bring us to the approval of the agenda. Motion to approve. Motion. By Brandon. Second. Second by Teresa. All those in favor? Any opposed? All right, that takes us to our presentation from the students of Grand Star. All right, good evening. We have a, uh, another pre-recorded presentation from Grand Star Elementary and their principal, Karina Ouellette. principal at Grand Star Elementary. With the unique challenges in this school year, we have put a strong emphasis on our social emotional needs of the students. We had the opportunity during our August professional development to look at what we already had in place and have continued to build on our current foundation. This year, when students arrive at school, they have a minimum of three adult contact points prior to the school day starting. Students are greeted in the car loop or when they get off the bus, during temperature checks, and then again by adults positioned in our hallway. This allows us the opportunity to have a positive interaction or pull students aside if they need additional support to transition from home to school. This is our second year at Grand Star to implement a morning meeting and incorporate social emotional curriculum of second step from preschool through fourth grade. The responsive classroom morning meeting is an engaging way to start the day. It helps to build a strong sense of community within the classroom through four components, greeting, sharing, group activity, and a morning message. In addition to our morning meeting, teachers are presenting their second step social emotional learning curriculum. This curriculum provides language and tools from perspective taking to calming down techniques. The units in each grade level all cover similar topics that build as students get older. The units include skills for learning, empathy, emotional management, and problem solving. Eyes are watching, ears are listening, voices quiet, bodies calm. This is how we listen. Second Step developed a three-week community rebuild unit this year to address the challenges students have faced in regards to COVID-19. We were able to review these lessons in August and present them in the first three weeks of school. It is exciting to know students have practiced these skills and are using these strategies in real life situations. All right, thank you, Grand Star. And that leads us to the great employees serving the district recognition.
Okay, good evening again. We have three uh, employees that are recognizing since the last time we're to get, we were together. The first is James Darnell, who is the lead, cons lead custodian at Sunflower Elementary. He was nominated by coworker Julie Rains, who wrote, James has been a rock, a rock for our building this year, every year, but this year especially. His day-to-day -day work has changed tremendously, yet he, is yet he has taken it on without a complaint. You can find him ready to help in every way possible at all times of the day. He works tirelessly spraying hallways, removing trash, and answering calls from other building staff. The amazing part is that I have never seen him doing all of this without a smile on his face. His quiet demeanor shines in our building this year. For the week of December 18th, Tyler Reimer, who is a remote uh, math teacher um, uh, stationed at Pioneer Ridge Middle School, was nominated by parent Erin Grow. She writes, I'm wanting to nominate Tyler Reimer for a job well done. <clears throat> he is my daughter's seventh grade math teacher and has done a phenomenal job this fall teaching my daughter who has struggled for, math, for years with math. She said he is her favorite teacher of this entire pandemic and has done so great with really explaining things clearly. It is a huge, huge deal because the past few years have been stressful as it relates to math. She has an A right now, and it has been a blessing having him as a teacher. Math is such a huge foundation for so many things, so this is big for her. If you could please let him know, I would greatly appreciate it. And last this evening, two of them are actually in the room here. Aaron Valenta, who is an employee at Wheat Ridge Middle School, nominated the entire um, technology department, as did several others. But Aaron wrote specifically, this group has been in high demand the entire year. And although everyone is under some stress and has a lot on their plates, they probably have double. If it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be able to teach online. I appreciate their quick responses and help. So again, we want to thank them. They have taken on a huge load as well, this, or as a lot have, but them especially. So those are our three uh, award winners this, year, this month. Excellent. Thank, thank you, you, Dr. Booth. Mm -hmm. And thank you to all of our award winners. We don't have any commendation or notes of appreciation or hearing from citizens. So that leads us to the consideration of consent, which includes the minute, uh, regular meeting minutes held Monday, December 7th, the school board designation resolution, SB 130, financial statements, approval of claims, and that's what the consent entails. Motion to approve. Motion by Kristen. I'll second. Second by Lana. All those in favor? Any opposed? And that takes us to our Power School presentation by Dr. Platt. Our school student parent portal, thank you, provides access to information in real time for our students, for our parents, for our teachers. They're able to view attendance, grades, various assignment details, the school bulletin, my school bucks, our new nutrition services um, software, and they're able to access multiple students with one login. And what this means is as a parent with multiple children, I only have to remember one username and one password to be able to access all of my students' information. So when I go to log in to Parent Portal, this is the interface that I'm going to see. I'm going to have a username and a password that I can enter. But the first time I go to log in, I'm going to go to cre the Create Account tab. I'm going to receive an email from the district with my initial login information. From there, I will go to the parent portal login. I will enter my parent account details, my first name, my last name, my email, um, information such as that. 
And then each one of my children will have a unique ID and password. So I will go down to link students to account and I will enter that information. After I've done that, I then have my PowerSchool parent account. So I can go back to the login and now I'll begin logging in. Once I've logged in, I'm going to be taken to this initial grades and attendance dashboard. This is a one-stop shopping as a parent. I have the option or opportunity to see my students' attendance, both for a week view and as a total. I can see their schedule for their classroom, and I can also see their term grades. Anything that is in blue is clickable. So if I select my student's grade for one of their classes, it will take me inside the class score detail. And from here, I can see their teacher, their term, their grade. I can also go in and see any teacher comments my teacher has made available, and individual assignment details, and comments my teacher has made for that specific assignment. If I have younger students, who receive standards grades, I can then go to the standards tab and view the grades for those standards. When I select my attendance totals, so for example, in this example, I have a absence for homeroom. So if I were to click on that as a parent, I have the opportunity to be able to see the date and the attendance code for that particular absence or tardy. As a parent, I can select grade history. And this gives me an overall snapshot by year of my students' grades and the credit hours that they've earned. And I can toggle from year to year to get an idea of how my student has performed. I can select course-based or standard-based report card. And that would let me then print out a copy of a web-based report card within PowerSchool. So I could see standards. I could see final grades for that term. I have an opportunity to also view its absence and tardies um, by term. I can select student transcript. This is very similar to the grades history, but in a more formal format. It gives me an opportunity to see from a web-based perspective what my student's transcript would look like. Email notification. As a parent, this was the first thing I went to because I wanted to set up email notifications to receive and to be able to see summary of grades and attendance, to be able to see the email showing assignment scores, you have an opportunity to also sign up for a detailed report of attendance and for the daily bulletin. I can select if I want to have this sent to another person that maybe wouldn't have a PowerSchool account, maybe a grandparent or, or some other person that's important to my child. I can also determine the frequency. So do I want to receive it in a weekly, in a every two weeks, monthly, or more format? The nice thing is if you have multiple students, you can select the apply these settings to all of your students and only have to complete this form once. And if I want to get an immediate email, I can select the send now and hit submit and it will go to my inbox. I can select teacher comments from the navigation and I'll be able to see stored comments that my teacher has made for my student by term for both elementary, middle, and high school students. As a parent, I like to see schedules as well. So I have an opportunity to see my students' schedules in three ways. The first way is the list view. And this gives all of the information basically in a spreadsheet type format. I can see it in a weekly schedule. So it lays it out Monday through Friday. And I can see class, teacher, their um, room number and the times for their classes. And finally, I can see it in matrix view. It all gives me the same information. It's just as a parent, I can view which way I'd like to see it better. 
the school bulletin. By selecting the school bulletin, I can view information that my student's school feels important and that they would like to share through PowerSchool. On this page, I can also search historically by selecting view other dates and putting in the date of the historical date of the bulletin that I would like to view. My School Bucks. My School Bucks is integrated into PowerSchool. So by selecting the My School Bucks app in the lower left-hand column of the navigation, I can then see my student's meal account information, their balance. I can sign up for auto pay. I can select view meal history so I can see purchases my child has made. I can add funds all within PowerSchool, or I can select go to MSB and this passes me through with a single sign-on into my school bucks where I can view invoices and fee statements for my child and then pay for those invoices there. Finally, I can go to account preferences and this is where if I wanted to um, change my account email address, change my username or my password, I would be able to do this here. I can also select the students tab and view the students that I have associated with my account, and I can add additional students. And finally is PowerSchool Mobile. So within the PowerSchool browser setting, I can go in on the lower left-hand corner and see the district code. This is the code that, as a parent, I can use to uh, set up the mobile browser or the mobile app for PowerSchool. And by clicking on it within the PowerSchool mobile browser, or the PowerSchool browser, I can go to the App Store or the Google Play Store and be connected directly with those apps. Once I've downloaded them, I enter that district code, and now I'm in a PowerSchool mobile app, and I can view all of the same information that I could view in the browser within my mobile device, my phone or my tablet. Are there any questions that I can answer about PowerSchool? I had a question about the transcripts. Yes. Can you, um, from PowerSchool, can you request transcripts be sent directly to colleges when they're seniors? Not directly through PowerSchool. Um, you can print an unofficial, uh, and it's more of a, a screenshot. So if you wanted to view that, but you would need to email the registrar directly for that. And then we, you guys have done, like, I, I, you, you did this through professional development, training the, the staff on it? Yes. Okay, how, how have we rolled it out for the parents? So for parents, we will be, we go live on January 19th. We will be sending out an email with initial login information. Within that email will also be links to various step sheets and videos that walks them through how to set up your initial account and the many features within PowerSchool. I want to say thank you to Tracy. Tracy has spent many, 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 many hours, long hours, um, working very diligently with um, both uh, Ben, who has taken the lead with her on this, and then Ed Services and several departments to mm -hmm. get this up and running. So greatly appreciated. Thank you. Um, the other thing, too, Kristen, is on the transcripts, there's a um, system that the colleges use that at one time we were linked into, but then Skyward didn't play friendly with it, and PowerSchool will play with that. So um, I've been contacted about us looking back into doing that again with that um, company, and we'll add that on eventually here down the road. because so that it, would make it like a more automatic. Yeah, it's just like the, when the colleges request it from each other and stuff. So gotcha. And we, we had it for a short period of time, and then Skyward just did not play nice with I it. Miss that short period of time with all three yeah, of my kids. I know. <laughs> I'm with you on that instead of printing and sending and stuff. But but yeah, so okay. looking forward to that. So thank you, Tracy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And if there's no other questions for Tracy, that'll take us to our superintendent report. So I'm gonna jump through some there. I know there's some logistic things in there, but and Linda, this is gonna be impromptu for her, but I just want to share that I think there's something in here out of the Ed Service that I think is important. It's the spelling bee. And I don't know if anybody caught that. But Gardner has been a long-time participant in the regional spelling bee that has led some years to where we've had students go on. And I think it's exciting, even in the times that we're in, that we had three students 
that did qualify. And we had three teachers that took on that responsibility this year of being the spelling, spelling bee um, sponsors. And so um, I don't know, Linda, if you have anything you want to share in reference to that. I know they came out of the middle school and they worked really hard to get this to, off the ground so that our three students in here that um, are able to participate and they're able to move on. So I'll, I'll let Linda, and like I said, this is very impromptu, but I think it's important because the hours that um, the staff put in this with the kids to get them prepared for it, it's, it's, and if you've not watched one of these, it's pretty intense. Mm -hmm. Well, and really our concern at the middle school level was how are we going to pull this off with the kids being, the majority of them being remote. Um, and Amy Van Reen from uh, TRMS took a great leadership role, was really interested. And so she worked with um, Script Spelling Bee to learn what we needed to do to be able to do it virtually. And then she worked with the sponsors from all three schools to be able to get this set up so that they could all participate. It was all um, within the guidelines so then they could then move on to the county spelling bee. So, um, you know, hats off to her. She took great initiative and asked to be able to have that responsibility and, and made it a really awesome opportunity for all of those kids. Thank you, Linda. So D'Angelo Davis out of fifth grade TRMS is as correct as um, advancing on. Ashton Lang, eighth grade WMS. And then Elena Armato is going from seventh grade at PRMS. So excited. And I don't, are there live links to that where people can watch that? I know they had talked about it at one point, maybe being able to. Okay. So when we get those, we can send those out or put it on our, our page or something. Okay, perfect. All right, that's all I have. All right. Thank you, Pam. That leads us to the comments of the Board of Education. All right, I hope you guys had a great new year. That takes us to executive session for personnel. Um, we can choose a time or make a motion. It's up to you guys. Real quick, Pam, yep. Pam, would you mind giving a quick update? I know we're still in the red, the gating criteria, mm -hmm. just so everybody's aware of it's not that we don't know what's going on, but right, we're still in, and we're uh, today we're, we're at, at 14.7, so we're still, yes, we're still in red, which would leave us at remote um, at this point from what the board had decided in November. And in November, we were at 13.9, I believe, five. at 13.5, five. Five, yeah at that time when the board decided to continue with the remote. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Comments by the board? I, I'll go then. Um, question, have um, you been contacted or has any of the school districts been contacted by the state as to where um, or when teachers will fall into vaccination categories at all? Um, yes. Uh, the state has been communicating with us as what that's going to look like as phase-wise. Right now, um, I had a conversation with the county today in reference to our um, school psychs being contacted, social workers being contacted. Um, I think it came out publicly about the vaccine. They've ran out of vaccine, so they're still... Um, healthcare workers that they still need to vaccinate. And then um, our nurses, Ben would have to jump in on that, on how many of our nurses or they had the option to... The nurses, we were last week... Last week at, or Monday, mm -hmm. when we came back from break, um, at 10.06, we got an email from the health department saying the vaccinations were available for our nurses and they needed to be there either Tuesday or Wednesday. So thankfully, we had, were in the middle of two PD days and uh, we got that information out to all of our nurses immediately and they had an opportunity to sign up. Um, and, you know, obviously it's their decision if they wanted to pursue that, but they, those that did were all able to get in for the first uh, round of that. And then the health department will be in touch uh, regarding when they'll get the second, the second dose. So uh, the health services team uh, has, that's been made available to them and several of them took advantage of that. 
so and keep going on the phases there. So as of right now with the vaccine running out in the area in Kansas, it's looking like it could be the end of the school year into the summer potentially where uh, it, and it's going to depend on how quickly the vaccine, I mean, how quickly they get it back in the area. So, um, and that was pretty much the update. Um, the state was hoping that we would get it um, here in February and March, but now it does not sound, um, they said there were still several healthcare workers that they still needed to get to. And then also in that it jumps next to the um, nursing homes. So uh, the thing, I think there's rumor out there about the prisoners were gonna get it before the educators were gonna get it and stuff. And the state cleared that up with us on a superintendent's meeting that that's not, that's not correct. So. So that's where we're at. Um, they'll know more this next week, I'm sure, as the shipments and what they're seeing with shipments and what those are looking like coming in. So, thank you. Any other comments? That'll take us to executive session. Again, we can go in for how, the time we agree, or we can just make a motion if there's nothing anyone wants to talk about. Five minutes, okay, perfect. Okay.
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. <Right. laughs> we're good. All right, we're back, and that'll take us to the action on the personnel. I'd take a motion. Motion to approve as presented. Motion to approve as presented by Kristen. I'll second. Second by Teresa. I'll give it to you, Teresa. All those in favor? <laughs> Any opposed? All right. That's uh, I takes us to the adjournment of the meeting. Motion to adjourn. Motion by Kristen. Second by Atlanta. All those in favor? Any opposed? Next meeting's February 1st, 6 p.m. at this location. Thank you.